Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. We have 4 to the power a plus 18 to the power a equals 81 to the power a. Here, we're not necessarily looking for integer solutions. If you replace a with integers, for example, if a is equal to 0, you're going to notice that it's not satisfied. a equals 1, a equals 2. And of course, at some point, 81 to the power a is going to be much, much bigger. So, we're looking for real solutions. Let's go ahead and look at the problem. So we've done similar problems before, and I could probably call this a golden exponential equation for certain reasons you're going to see in a little bit. Now, I have 81 to the power a on the right-hand side, and that seems to be the highest base. Let's go ahead and divide everything by that. And you'll see in a little bit, this is going to turn into a nice, nice uh, equation. And best of all, we're going to get one on the right-hand side. So, how do we simplify this? I have like x to the power a divided by y to the power a. I can definitely write it as x over y to the power a. So, by using that property, we can write this as 4 over 81 to the power a plus 18 over 81 to the power a. And that equals 1. Now, 18 over 81 can be simplified, so let's go ahead and do that here. 18 over 81, the common factor is 9. So if you divide both the top and the bottom by 9, you're going to get 2 over 9. So this turns into 2 over 9, and notice that 4 over 81 is 2 over 9 squared, which is kind of cool, right? So we have the following. 4 over 81 can be written as 2 over 9 squared squared, but then I have to raise it to the power a. And then 18 over 81 can be written as 2 ninths. Let's do that. And then raise it to the power a equals 1. Now, we have 2 to the power 9, 2 to the power 2, 2 to the power a. You can write this as 4 over 81, but that's just going to bring us backwards. So instead of that, instead of squaring the 2 ninths, why don't we raise it to the power a first? In other words, if you have a to the power m to the power n, this is the same thing as a to the power n to the power m because they're both equal to a to the power mn. And mn and nm are the same. Probably we should pick different variables. They're too close. So anyway, so I can go ahead and write this as follows. 2 over 9 to the power a squared plus 2 over 9 to the power a equals 1. Now what do you see here? 2 over 9 to the power a is repeated, but there's a square, so we're going to use substitution. So here's how it goes. I'm going to call this 2 over 9 to the power a. Let's call that b. How about that? That gives us the following. 2 over 9 to the power a is b, so this is going to become 2, I was going to say 2b, but not 2b, b squared plus b equals 1. This should be familiar. If you're not familiar with this, then um, I want you to check out golden ratio, a lot of interesting properties. Anyways, if you solve this using the quadratic formula, we're going to get two solutions, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac, which is square root of 5. Uh-oh. Came too straight. Square root of 5 over 2. And from here, we can kind of split it up. Say, hey, b1 is equal to negative 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. And b2, which is the other b value, is negative 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. So here's the interesting part. b is something to the power a. And the base is positive. When the base is negative, uh, we run into problems. So you don't want that. So we can write this as 2 over 9 to the power a. And we can do the same thing here, right? Okay, so what do we do? Well, from here we can find the a values, but 2 over 9 to the power a cannot equal negative 1 minus root 5 over 2 because this is negative, right? And 2 ninths is positive, therefore it can't have a negative power. Make sense? So we're going to discard this solution. So we're going to go with this one. But again, that's not a solution. It's just valid, right? The second one is invalid. 
How do you solve this? Let's rewrite it. 2 over 9 to the power a equals negative 1 plus root 5. I'm going to write it as root 5 minus 1 over 2. And then at this point, how do you solve this equation, right? How do you solve it? Well, you have to get rid of the exponent. So let's ln both sides. ln meaning natural logarithm. Okay? ln 2 over 9 to the power a equals ln root 5 minus 2 over 1. Root 5 minus 1 over 2. Okay. I said it the other round. So what do we get from here? We can go ahead and bring this a down here. And then we're going to get a times ln 2 over 9 equals ln root 5 minus 1 over 2. And by division, we can find the value of a. And remember, we were looking for the value of a. So a becomes ln root 5 minus 1 over 2 divided by ln 2 ninths. So you got to be careful a little bit here. Is this a positive quantity? Is this a negative quantity? And you can evaluate that, right? But here's one thing to keep in mind. ln 2 ninths. 2 ninths. So think about it. ln 1 is 0 if uh, the value is less than 1 and greater than 0, its ln is going to be negative. What about root 5 minus 1 over 2, right? Is that a positive or a negative value? How can we tell? We have to compare this to 1, right? How do you compare it to 1? Well, here's the thing. If this is greater than 2, then this is greater than 1. So my claim is, hey, can square root of 5 minus 1 be greater than 2? Because that would imply that this is greater than 1. I don't know it, but I'm just guessing, right? So is this true? That implies root 5 is greater than 3, which is false. Because if you square both sides, you're going to get 5 is greater than 9, which is nonsense. So this is a negative quantity. That's a negative quantity. The quotient is positive. Let me show you the numerical values. And then we're going to take a look at the graph of um, two functions. And then we'll just talk talk about this briefly. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the... I think we're going to look at the numerical value first. All right, here we go. Like I said earlier, the bottom is a negative quantity. The top is a negative quantity. So their ratio, the quotient, is positive. And it's kind of close to one-third, but here's what the graph looks like. They're both exponential functions. First, 81 to the power of x, especially for negative values of x. It's going to be like, let's say, x is negative 1, 1 over 81, 1 over 81 squared. They're going to be very, very small compared to the other one. They're going to be super small. But then, after a while, the um, pink graph, which is 81 to the power of x, is going to catch up. They'll intersect, and after that point, there's no other intersection point because 81 to the power of x is just going to be super duper larger. And... This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.